cataractcoach.com. Opaque posterior polar cataract with a shallow anterior chamber. Key to success in this tough case. We've got to preserve that posterior capsule. This is an interesting case. I'm showing the video at 2x so we can get to it, but look at that dense opacity. It's for sure posterior polar. The patient has a twin who had the same issue, and the twin had surgery elsewhere and had a ruptured capsule, vitrectomy, dropped nuclear pieces, renal detachment, all kinds of issues. So this patient traveled to me from far away or down their state for surgery. You can see there is that opacity. Now the tough part here is it's a small eye, shallow AC. Let's make a good incision here, about 2.2 or so. And now we need to make the rexus. The rexus is so important because there may be a chance you're putting in a sulcus lens and you need to get that optic capture. So here I really want a five millimeter rexus. I don't want it to get too big. I don't want a six millimeter rexus because then I won't have an ability to you know, carefully capture the optic for sulcus placement. So there's a beautiful rexus. Now what's the key here? No hydrosection, only hydrodelineation. And I want that golden ring, not getting it yet. I want just delineation. Notice how the tip of the cannula is within the rexus. Don't go beyond it. I need to get the hydrodelineation done. And just take your time until you achieve that. Remember, by the way, so much more outside of YouTube. If you go to the cataractcoach.com website, do you know there's a free PDF book, 25-part curriculum series? We got our podcast, and I'm on all social media. Check it out. Now, here we go. I'm using the chopper now. After the hydrodelineation, I want to get that endonucleus out of the bag. Separate the endonucleus from the epinucleus. And I think I did a reasonable job there. But let's put the phaco probe in the eye and use the chopper again. And I really want to get that endonucleus up and out. So I'll put the chopper there. I don't want to go around the equator of the lens. I want to get that endonucleus. There it is. Look at that. That's the endonucleus, which I can take out now. Again, no hydrodissection has been done. Zero. Only hydrodelineation. And there's the endonucleus has gone. Now I'm left with an epinuclear shell. And there's that cortex and, of course, the polar opacity. Now, I don't want the eye to collapse here, so I'm going to inject some... And now we're going to do viscodissection using the viscoelastic, the dispersive viscoelastic, carefully going under the rexus and doing a viscodissection for all around that lens cortex and epinuclear shell. So now we've separated the cortex and epinuclear shell from the capsule, most of it, using viscodissection. So now putting the eye probe in the eye, we can just aspirate this. Now the advantage of viscodissection is that it's nice and slow and controlled, and if there is a break even, the viscoelastic will tampon on the break for you in that posterior capsule. But I think we're gonna be okay here. We're gonna just vacuum it up, get that cortex out, the epinuclear shell out, and we'll be very gentle here. And you can see that opacity is still there in the center. We're going to uh, go for that last. Remember, we've learned from Osher and Vasavara that the rate of posterior capsule rupture historically for these cases in posterior polar has been about 30%. And we can make that much, much less, somewhere in the low single digits, 1, 2, 3%, if we do this technique of hydrodelineation only, no hydrodissection, and then viscodissection. Look at that, we did it. Now take out the rest of that little bit of cortex here, being very gentle. Do not touch that central posterior capsule. Just go under the rexus to grab any cortex that you can. Do not polish the posterior capsule. Do not go down there. Now inject your cohesive agent and don't let the eye collapse. Because just letting the AC collapse and letting that posterior capsule come upwards may be enough stress to rip it right open. So we want to keep that eye pressurized. So there it is. Now we're going to get the lens in. And our lens, again, it's a high-power lens. It's, a, I think, a 27 diopter lens. So we'll inject that in the capsule bag. This hyperopic patient is going for a post-op goal of emetropia or plano. And get that lens in nice and easy. And the, the single piece is nice because as it goes in, it opens up very uh, slowly and in a controlled manner. There it is, 27 diopter lens. Let's get back here. Now to remove the viscoelastic, Watch, I'll first seal up the main incision, just a little bit. We'll do a little more later, but just to make sure it's a little tight so that when I come out with the eye probe, I don't want to collapse the eye again. So slow and gentle, removing the viscoelastic, nice and easy. There's a little lens strand. We can polish up a little bit if you want on the capsular rim, but again, this is a delicate case. And you can see there's still a tiny little bit of material on the posterior capsular centrally. We're not worried about it. You can do a YAG laser capsulotomy in a few months. So here we go. Let's try to get this quickly hydrated, get that AC pressurized, 
Hydrate the main incision more. Try not to let the AC collapse. Good. You can now readjust that lens position a little bit, get it nicely centered. There's that Rex. This looks pretty good. 360 overlap. I'm happy. Ooh, that's a tough case. So posterior polar, definitely a case you need to learn how to do. Remember, no hydrodissection. Only do hydrodelineation, get the endonucleus out, and then do viscodissection in a slow and controlled manner with a dispersive agent to gently get out the rest of the lens material. Here's a limbal relaxing incision at the end of the case. Got to fix that astigmatism and a beautiful outcome. Hey, I want to remind you guys, you know, there's a lot more besides just YouTube. If you go to the Cataract Coach website, there's a free Cataract Coach PDF book. Yeah, it's free. There's a 25-part curriculum series. You can learn FACO, free daily email, and of course, I'm on all social media. Check us out on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram. Oh yeah, follow my Insta for sure. Facebook, and then I'm also putting a new podcast every single week, and that's on any podcast service that you want.